In this next series of videos, I want to take a closer look at some common polymers uh, so that we can just get some basic ideas about what are the characteristics at the molecular level that give rise to unique properties at the bulk or the macro scale. And the first one I'm going to talk about is polyethylene. This is kind of the quintessential polymer because, as we'll see, uh, it has a relatively simple chemical structure. Uh, but before we do that, I just want to review uh, what we said uh, polymers are. Uh, they're long chain molecules, they're macromolecules, uh, and these chains are composed of repeated units or monomers that are joined together by covalent bonds uh, to form these long chains. And so as a result uh, of these properties, uh, the nature of the properties of the monomer itself and the nature of how the chain itself is structured both contribute to give rise to the physical properties of the resulting material. Uh, so both the chemical composition and the molecular architecture of the monomer and the arrangement of the chain itself uh, are parameters that uh, are going to be important uh, for us to understand uh, if we want to uh, characterize polymers and also be able to understand how uh, synthesis methods uh, can be uh, adjusted to generate the properties that we want to obtain. So polyethylene, uh, I said, is a relatively simple structure. Uh, the monomer is two carbons, uh, and the side groups are hydrogens. Uh, so just carbon and hydrogen are the main constituents uh, of this uh, material. And so a polymerization reaction then uh, attacks this carbon-carbon double bond and allows these monomers to assemble end-to-end -to, -end, uh, to form long chains. Uh, so in the polymer, you have carbon on the backbone, and then the side groups uh, coming off from each of these carbons uh, is a hydrogen. So remember, carbons have four uh, bonds, uh, so you, each carbon has four uh, atoms that are uh, connected uh, to it. Now, it's tedious uh, to write uh, this uh, for a long chain. We don't want to write uh, all this uh, structure together. So uh, the typical way that we're going to abbreviate uh, these kind of structures is as follows. So this shows the repeat unit. Uh, the two carbons and the two hydrogens in a, in a bracket, uh, and with this uh, subscript N. So remember, N is the degree of polymerization or the number uh, of these repeat units in the polymer chain. Okay, so now we know how to write uh, the polymer, uh, how the polymer uh, can uh, connect end-to-end -to, -end to form the monomer. Uh, so let's look at some of the uh, particular properties of polyethylene. So because this is a relatively simple structure, it has this carbon-carbon backbone, and these very small side groups, uh, this gives uh, polyethylene the ability to uh, have a very high degree of flexibility in the chain. So really, probably uh, a good picture for a polymer chain uh, of a polyethylene is like a, a bowl of spaghetti. Uh, you know, these spaghetti strands are flexible. Uh, they can uh, bend in, in many different ways. Uh, and um, so the ability to manipulate this flexibility on the backbone uh, actually is important because uh, in some cases, uh, this can allow the chain to fold uh, very compactly uh, to form a semi-crystalline um, uh, architecture. Uh, and this property then can uh, give rise to different mechanical characteristics of the material. So there's different versions of polyethylene uh, that uh, exist, uh, and I guess I'm going to talk about them in the reverse chronological order. Uh, High-density polyethylene is kind of the picture of polymers that we have so far. Uh, that was developed later, uh, but I want to talk about it first because it matches our picture of polymers as just a long linear chain, and that's essentially what high-density polyethylene is. Uh, and because these are linear chains, they're flexible, they have a high mechanical strength, and they can fold into dense uh, uh, arrangements. So these kind of materials are used uh, to make things that you've probably seen, like milk jugs. Uh, these are high-density polyethylene, uh, so they're rigid. Uh, they have a, a, a good mechanical strength, uh, but also things like uh, bags uh, for groceries and other things like that. So a uh, bag like this uh, is also high-density polyethylene. Uh, it's in a thin film. Uh, but again, it has kind of a rigid structure. It's not optically clear. These are generally opaque materials, uh, and that's a consequence of the semi-crystalline uh, arrangement uh, of, the, of the material. Uh, 
I have a couple of others here. These are also polyethylene. You know, these are the ones that kind of have this crinkly sound uh, because they're more or less rigid uh, here. Um, I don't want it. I'm not endorsing any of these products, but I uh, just want to show polyethylene. And you can see on the bag, uh, actually, if you look closely, uh, it tells you what it is. Um, high density polyethylene uh, here, HDPE. So look at some of the bags and materials uh, that you uh, have and, and see if you can begin identifying what kind of polymers are there. Uh, actually, it's interesting because uh, when the technology to make this uh, extremely linear version of polyethylene was developed in the 1950s, actually, uh, they didn't really have a particular use in mind. And the first application that actually came into play was in the toy industry and with these uh, hula hoops. So I don't know if you are familiar with hula hoops, but they're these um, uh, hoops made of uh, plastic uh, that you uh, can spin around your waist. Uh, so that was a big uh, craze in the 1950s. Uh, and so, so they sort of piggybacked on this by using polyethylene uh, to produce uh, these hula hoops. That's another example of how uh, forces in the market uh, kind of uh, drive uh, some of the innovations uh, in, in a lot of these industries. But actually before that time, it wasn't possible to produce polyethylene in such a neat linear fashion uh, as we uh, talked about uh, in the previous slide. Uh, polyethylene materials were actually not so rigid. They were kind of more bendable, more mushy. And what the reason for that was that the chain structure actually contained branches. Uh, so this is what we know now as low density polyethylene. This was the polyethylene that was initially discovered in the 1930s. We talked about linear chains, but you can imagine that, you know, instead of this chain continuing uh, from left to right, you know, you could have a carbon maybe inserted here where this hydrogen is, and then a side chain could start growing uh, from this point. Now you could have multiple branch points. Uh, and this was actually what was happening in the initial versions of polyethylene that were produced. And so as a result, these additional branches make it harder for the molecules to fold in a very compact way. They can't fold as compactly as they can with the linear chains and high density polyethylene. And so that affects the mechanical properties. It makes them softer and less rigid. Uh, and you can see that uh, in a bag like this. So this bag also is uh, polyethylene, but it's low density polyethylene. And notice that it's softer. It doesn't have kind of this crinkly, rigid uh, characteristic that uh, the typical grocery bags have. It feels kind of softer and maybe uh, if you pull it, it would stretch a little bit more than uh, the other bags. Also, because this is not a crystalline material, uh, it can be produced in an amorphous fashion. We'll talk more about that later, but this lack of order is, gives it kind of a, what's called a glassy state. Uh, and that means it can be optically transparent. So this bag uh, also is a low density polyethylene bag and notice that it's clear. Uh, you can see through it. Uh, so these had a lot of applications for these kind of bags, films, flexible tubing, things that need to be softer uh, and more bendable. And that's, again, a result of the fact that you have the same basic monomer structure, but because you have these branches in low-density polyethylene, uh, it can't compact as densely, and so therefore it's a softer material than high-density polyethylene that you see in milk jugs.